This is video number uh, 13 from digital-university.org. In this video we're going to present our second example of uh, mesh current analysis and the circuit that we want to take a look at is this one right here where we have a 6 volt, a 4 volt, and a 3 volt constant voltage sources and we have these three resistors in the network. Um, incidentally, for the first 30 videos or so, all the um, networks that we're going to focus our attention on will be direct current networks. But the principles that we learn, those will be directly applicable to alternating currents that we will cover um, in the later videos. Also, notice that this circuit, as in the previous problem, has no current sources, just um, voltage sources. If there's a current source um, in the circuit, there's a way we can handle that too. We'll do that in some future videos. Right now, let's see if we can solve this problem. So, what we do is, we look at this part of the circuit and this part of the circuit as if they're independent loops. And we assume that in each loop, there is a clockwise current flowing in it. So here in the first loop, we're assuming that there is a clockwise current like this of I1 that flows through the resistor, through these two batteries, and through this resistor. Now, in point of fact, the current might be in the opposite direction than what we're assuming it to be. And if that turns out to be the case, when we do the number crunching later on, we'll get a negative value for this current, indicating that it is flowing in the opposite direction, and we can make the necessary correction. And then here in this loop, we have current I2, again, assuming that it's going in a clockwise direction. Now, when a current flows through a resistor, um, we're saying, well, it enters at a higher potential, and it exits at a lower potential. So this is the purpose of the plus minus sign across resistor 2. And then resistor 4, we could think of it as being shared by the I1 current and the I2 current. So on the I1 side of things, there's a plus minus like this. On the I2 side of things, there's a plus minus in this direction. And here for resistor number 6, again, I2 coming in, current number 2 coming in at a higher potential and leaving at a lower potential. So let's go ahead and set our equations up. Now here in this first part of the circuit, we see we're treating the current as if it's going across the battery. So it's going from a higher potential to a lower potential. So there's a voltage drop. So we indicate that with a minus sign, minus 6. And what we're going to do is go around the loop here and add up all the voltage drops. We're not going to put in the uh, uh, the unit sign for um, voltage, just the numbers. And then here, going through this resistor, going to plus minus, another voltage drop. So indicate it with the minus sign. And the voltage of or the uh, magnitude of the voltage drop the magnitude of the resistance times the amount of current going through it. Now here, it's, we were imagining that the current, I1, is going through this battery. Then here, it's going from a lower potential to a higher potential. So we indicate that with a plus sign. Now, we come to this resistor here. Now we're going plus minus a voltage drop, and we get it with a minus sign. And the magnitude of the voltage drop is the magnitude of the resistor, 4, times the amount of current going through it. Now here, we're on the I1 side of things. So when determining how much current is going through this resistor, we say it is current I1 minus current I2. And there, we went around the loop, 
Here's our voltage drops, and they have to be equal to zero. And here, if you just do some real elementary algebra and collect terms, you see that this is equal to minus 3 times I1 plus 2 times I2 equals 5. So this is from mesh 1. So here we have one equation that involves two unknowns, current I1 and current I2. Now let's see what we can get from this side of things. So here, let's start here. Current I2 is going through this resistor. We have the voltage drop like this, so we indicate it with a minus sign. And the magnitude of the voltage drop is the magnitude of the resistance times the amount of current going through it. And that's going to be, on this side now, we're taking it as I2 minus I1. as the amount of current that is flowing through this resistor. Okay, and then here it is going from the battery, and here then we are going from a higher potential to a lower potential, so that's a voltage drop, minus 4, and then across this resistor, another voltage drop, the magnitude, so we have a minus sign. The magnitude of the voltage drop is going to be the magnitude of the resistance, that's 6, times the amount of current going through it. And then finally, here we imagine that the current goes across the battery, and here then there is another voltage drop. Indicate that with a minus sign. And the set, all these have to add up to be equal to 0. And again, if you do some elementary algebra and collect terms, you have that 4 times I1 minus 10 times I2 equals negative 1. And this is from the second mesh. So here is our second equation then. So, what we have here then, two equations, and we have two unknowns to solve for, I1 and I2. So, two unknowns, two, two equations to work with, we should be able to solve this with no big problem. So, let's continue on. Let's write this, here we have minus 3 for I1 and 4 for I1. So we're going to have a matrix like this. Uh, say here's column I1 and we'll have minus 3, 4 and then for I2 we have plus 2 minus 10. And then here we have these numbers. This is equal to 5 and negative 1. Okay, and we're concerned, first of all, with this determinant right here. This is, these are the coefficients of I1. These are the coefficients of I2. And this column of numbers, we use this in just a couple of minutes. The first thing we want to do, step one, is when you have the components of your current, current one and current two in this case, and you make the matrix with those components. So here, the coefficient on I1 is negative three, coefficient I1 is 4, 
make a column like that. Minus 3 and 4, same thing for I2. Coefficient is 2, coefficient is minus 10, make a column with those coefficients. Now, we have this determinant, let's determine the numerical value of it. So this would be equal to 30 minus 4 times 2 is 8 equals 22. Okay, now let's find out, let's determine what I1 is and what I2 is. What we do is to determine I1, the first current, that is equal to, we go back to this matrix that we just made and the column numbers for I1 we replace with these column numbers right here. So we have 5, negative 1, and this stays the same, 2, negative 10. And now we're just going to treat this as a 2 by 2 determinant and divide it by 22. And that will be the numerical value of current I1. Once we determine this, in just a minute, we're going to use the same procedure to determine what I2 is. Only with I2, we're going to keep this column vector and replace this column vector with these numbers and divide it by 22. Okay, let's see. I1 is going to be equal to, here we have 10 minus 10 times 5, that's minus 50, minus negative 2, that would be minus 50, plus 2, divided by 22. So that equals minus 48, divided by 22. And put it on the calculator and I think this is going to be approximately minus 2.18 amps. So first of all then we determine what I1 is but this minus sign means that it is not going in this direction it is going in the opposite direction. So we'll correct that in just a couple of minutes. First of all, let's see if we can quickly determine what is the value for I2. To do that, we'll have to make some room. Okay, now to determine I2, that will be equal to, we take our original matrix of numbers, we keep this, the I1 column, that stays the same, and now we replace the I2 column with these. and is divided by 22. Okay, and what's going to be the value of this 2 by 2 determinant? Here we have negative 1 times negative 3, that's plus 3, minus 4 times 5, that's 20, divided by 22. So here we have minus 17 over 22. So that equals minus. 
and put on the calculator and that's about I guess roughly 0.77 amps. So there we have it. We determined I1 and I2, but they both have negative signs. I1 was minus 2.18 amps, and I2 was minus 0.77 amps. So we're almost finished. Let's go back and look at our circuit, except that we have the wrong directions in. So we can change that easily enough. I1 actually is going in this direction. And I2 is going in this direction. Now for the current that's going through this resistor here, well we have in this direction it's plus 2.18 amps flowing up and then coming down we have 0.77 amps. So subtract these and you get 1.41 amps. So for resistor 4, or for the resistor, we'll just say the 4 ohm resistor, there is 1.41 amps flowing through it in this direction. I1 is flowing up and now it's with plus 2.18 amps. We can change these to plus signs because we changed our arrows here. I2 is coming down with 0.77 amps. Take their difference and you have 1.41 amps going up. Okay, and of course the current going through this resistor is 2.18 amps in this direction. So we should be formally correct add that plus and that minus and change this to minus plus and the amount of current going through that resistor is 0.77 amps. Okay, hope that was helpful. Um, come back, we're going to try and solve some more problems like these and once you kind of practice it with a while, there's some really nice um, shorthand techniques, if you will, that makes the method a lot quicker and a lot easier to apply, and that's what we're going to try and develop in the next video. So come back, join us for that video, and we'll try and solve some more problems.